Today I'm looking at one of the most beloved Seikos and share my opinion on why this is the only watch that you'll ever need. I'm of course talking about the Seiko SNA411, the Flight Master. I know it's 2022 and the watch has been out for more than 20 years and there are just hundreds of videos out there talking about this, but I have to share my opinion on this. This was not a watch that I thought I would love. I watched DGV raving about the Flightmaster a few years ago. It didn't do anything for me. I just found it to be this obnoxious giant piece with all this information that just makes the watch unreadable. Like how would you, how would you read this? But then I saw the watch in person and you can't really find these at retail. So I had to contact somebody that I knew and I'll link down his page in the description below. If you're looking for pre-owned watches in awesome condition and great price, but I had to really look at the watch in person to understand why people love it the way that they do. I've been shooting B-rolls for three days now and I'm still not satisfied. In person, this watch just looks so amazing. This is an aviation style chronograph, which means that it has additional features. The first aviation chronograph to have the slide rule function was made by Breitling around 1950s and making it essentially a smartwatch of that era with computation capabilities for pilots. Breitling basically came up with this design. Seiko didn't invent something extraordinary here, but they did contribute in a big way to chronographs. And that's by coming up with the world's first quartz chronograph. This watch is powered by the 762 quartz chronograph movement, which is kind of the reinterpretation of the original chronograph created by Seiko. You can calculate so many things with this watch. Not only you can calculate basic maths like multiplication and division, but also something like fuel consumption, unit conversions, speed, distance, time, square roots, climbing altitudes, and so many other things. The watch comes in a 42 millimeter case diameter, but it wears like a 40 millimeter, which is due to the short lug to lug distance of only 44 millimeters, which is personally the smallest lug to lug distance I've ever seen in a watch. And this makes the watch sit really well on small wrists without looking like a monster. You've got 13 millimeters of case thickness, which is quite slim for a chronograph, but this watch having a quartz chronograph movement does allow for that to be possible. The lug width is an odd 21 millimeters, which is not a favorite size for most watch collectors because you don't have as many strap options out there as you would have for straps with even widths like 20 or 18 millimeters. But the good news on that end is that you can still wear a 20 millimeter watch strap like the one that I've put on my flighty right here, which is by Nomad Watchworks. I've done a whole video on Nomad Watchworks straps and I'll link that in the description down below. So do check it out. And even with that 20 millimeter strap, you can't really see the spring bar. It's barely visible. So you don't have to worry about the strap looking odd or something like that. Now the case finish is quite interesting. You have brush finish on the top and polished finishing on the side, but the polished finish is still quite utilitarian as the finish on the steel is slightly textured and rustic rather than a smooth mirror-like finish. And this kind of makes the whole finishing feel right in line with the overall theme of this watch, which is to be a robust, rugged tool watch. You have a stainless steel bi-directional bezel with sawtooth edge for easier operation of the slide rule function. The loom is Seiko's proprietary loom, but it's not as fantastic as on a dive watch, but quite visible in the dark to be able to read the time. You've got threaded crown and threaded pushers that allow the watch to have an unexpected 200 meters of water resistance, which is unlike most aviation style chronographs. 
because when you're wearing an aviation watch, you're not expecting to swim with this watch. So having a high water resistance is almost never a priority for these kind of watches. These guys, they don't care. They, they've still went all out in terms of the robustness of the watch. You have a double domed hard legs crystal, which adds so much character to this watch. It kind of adds that versatility to it in terms of it being able to be dressed up or down. Now the watch comes with a stainless steel bracelet with solid links and solid end links with a double push press clasp with two micro adjustments and polished center links. Now the polished center links are not really my thing for this watch because to me it doesn't really go with the look of the case. But in terms of quality, even though it's really heavy, overall the bracelet still feels much more solid than most bracelets that you get with entry-level Seikos. Now the original retail price of this watch was around $200, but nowadays the online price has gone slightly up to around $250 to $260. Let's just summarize the pros and cons of this watch. You're getting short lug to lug, making it one of the most compact entry-level aviation chronographs out there. The dome crystal makes this a truly aesthetic and photogenic watch. You're getting sheer robustness, strong heritage, and definite value for money. But unfortunately, it's still not a perfect design. One of the biggest issues of this watch comes to light when you're trying to change the strap. Changing the strap can be held because the gap between the spring bar and the case has been designed in a way that it makes you pull your hair off when you're trying to change the strap. And this specifically applied to sliding straps like Zulu, Marine National, or NATO straps. One of the solutions to this is to pair the watch with straps with quick release spring bar, like the one that I'm using right now. And for NATO straps, you can try getting curved spring bars, which makes the NATO strap slide in easily and without potentially damaging the straps. This is the one watch. I mean, with the 200 meters of water resistance, the watch being an absolute strap monster and a case size that's easy to slide in under a cuff, it just makes this watch such a great all-rounder, everyday style watch. You can dress it up, you can dress it down. In my opinion, it's an absolute gorgeous piece and amazing value for money. I think this model has already been discontinued. That's why every day the prices are going up. So this is your chance. If you still haven't picked it up, do it soon. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, do hit the like, subscribe, and the notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next one.